I praise and thank God for this beautiful morning that God has given to each one of our lives. For today's morning meditation, let's open our Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. How great you are, O Shavrich Lord! There is no one like you, and there is no God but you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this morning. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the word. Yes, Lord, there is no God like you, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to understand the depth of this verse, Lord Father. Please lead us forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, my dear friends, David's dear desire was to build a temple for the Lord. But he was required to forego the longings of his heart in favor of his son, whom God had decided would be the man to erect the house of God for his great glory. God's call on David's life was to fight the enemies of his people and to establish peace in the promised land. King David was permitted to make preparations for the foundation of the temple. But the building and beautifying of the house of the Lord was to be carried out by his son Solomon. Both kings of Israel were human vessels whom God would use to forward his eternal plans and purposes for the human race. And both men are also seen as a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in the particular role that they were called upon to play. right? Both David and Solomon illustrate their own unique aspects of Christ's role as savior of the world and king of Israel. Correct? The lives of both these kings were used by God to illustrate different aspects of the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, who like David would shepherd his people Israel and like Solomon will one day set up his eternal kingdom of peace and prosperity to the praise of God and for the benefit of the humankind. Correct? Friends, David was a man whose life illustrated much of the suffering service of Christ mighty during his sojourn on earth. Like David, Christ is the anointed king of Israel. Hallelujah. But like him, he is having to wait many years for his coronation. And Christ, like David, was rejected by his brethren, despised by his family, and living much of his life, wandering from place to place with nowhere to lay his head. But David slew the mighty Goliath which paints the picture of Christ's eternal victory over Satan, sin, death and hell. Hallelujah! The conflicts, hostility and rejection that peppered David's path, the conflict Christ endured during his earthly walk, but just as David was finally enthroned by all the twelve tribes of Israel, so the nation that rejected their anointed Messiah will welcome him at the second coming to rule and reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right? What heartfelt devotion David displays towards the Lord in his psalm of praise. Correct? Whose glory and greatness, mighty majesty, dominion and power so starkly contrast with his lowly servant who is proclaiming his rapt adoration of his heavenly Lord. Right? No surprise that David would proclaim, You are great, O Lord God. There is none like you, and there is no God besides you. According to all that we have heard with our ears, how similar to the lowly, Life of Jesus Christ himself, whose delight was to carry out the will of the Father and to do God's perfect will. Right? David rejoiced to sing praises to the Lord. 
his God, who does great things for his servants, and whose glorious character and attributes are proclaimed abroad. throughout the extremity of the heavens by creating itself and hidden in plain sight within the pages of sacred scriptures both the performances and the promises of god are subject of david's high acclaim and great rejoicing in god's eternal splendors which is further revealed in the person of the lord jesus christ who is a final revelation of the greatness of god whom to know is life eternal my friends how great this psalm is lord father there is no one like him my friends no one like him and there is no god like him he is coming very soon my friends how great is our god we can't even imagine we can't even express how great he is if we look back what all things that he has done in our lives so far i am very grateful for what the things that lord has done in my life even though i am not worthy all glory and honor is to him even though sometimes we may make him angry but his grace is sufficient he loves us he cares for us he forgives us but we still sometime make him unhappy through our deeds forgetting that how great he is today morning my dear friends come to his presence kneel down in, in his presence and just think back how great is our god how was i and how i am now only because of his grace we cannot imagine how great he is my friends thinking about all the things that he has done in our lives let's pray heavenly father we praise and thank you lord for this morning jesus lord we bow in the reverence before you and praise you in hushed whispers because you have stooped down to the children of men lord you lifted up us and seated us together with Christ in the heavenly places Lord Jesus Father we are not worthy to gather the crumbs under your table for you are great and your glory reaches in the extremity of the universe Lord and yet in love you sought us and made us accepted in the beloved Lord Father help us to glorify your name lord thinking about all the things that you have done in each one of our lives lord father you are the only god lord jesus there is no one else like you lord father help us to understand that as i meet each and every brother and sister in your mighty hands lord please bless everyone lord in jesus precious holy name we pray amen may god bless you my brothers and sisters Maranatha our Jesus is coming soon